The 18th century in European culture was the period of the Enlightenment and a time of social and cultural movements. The term itself confirms that this period of history was marked by the so-called light of the mind or changes in thinking, based on the exaltation of the mind and focus on objectivity and universality. The idea that teaching science, art and handicrafts would increase prosperity in the lives of citizens, in the state economy and in political power, which was inspired by creators of encyclopedias, became widely popular. The aesthetic moral function, or the function of educating society, was assigned to art on the society's road to the Enlightenment. Art was supposed to become a tool to repress negative personal characteristics and a thing that beautifies life and even strengthens political power. The concept of classicism, which was based on the principles of mathematically precise proportion, logic and harmony, is closest to the values of the Enlightenment. The art, which was clear, rational and promulgated civil virtues and patriotic dedication, was the opposite of the elaborate, often flippant and capricious art of the late Baroque and Rococo styles. Archaeological findings in Italy provided an important impetus for the new style. In 1738, in Herculaneum, archaeological digs were begun. The discovery of ancient cities buried under volcanic ash made a big impression. The beauty of ancient monuments, newly revealed to the world, performed an important role when propagating ancient motifs and composition in Europe, from England to St. Petersburg, and even in America. During the time of the reign of Stanislav Augustus Poniatowski, the last king of the Republic of the Two Nations, after 1764, the wave of Enlightenment ideas reached Lithuania as well. Here Jesuits and Piori prepared the way for them. The educational system, reformed by monks, made it possible to include new disciplines such as experimental studies, the modern languages of the largest European countries, history, astronomy, geography and architecture. Stanislav Augustus Poniatowski wanted to establish an art academy in Krakow or Warsaw. However, this idea was first implemented in Vilnius. In 1793, thanks to Bishop Ignotas Masalskis, a patron of art and science, a department of architecture was founded and in 1797 a department of painting and drawing was established. Eventually these departments developed into the Vilnius School of Art. In Lithuania, just like in Poland, the most pronounced buds of classicism blossomed in the works of artists who came from abroad and finished their studies there. Stanislav Augustus Poniatowski, who loved classicism and was a passionate collector and patron, summoned the best artists to his throne. He funded their studies in European art centers in France and Italy and provided profitable jobs for those who returned. Franciscus Moglavicius, the first professor of the painting and drawing department and the most pronounced representative of classicism in Lithuania, managed to satisfy the king's artistic taste the best. Funded by the ruler, he spent 20 years in Rome. There he studied in the famous St. Luke Academy. The themes of Franciscus Moglavicius's paintings represent a cycle of images of classicism. The artist created allegories, presented images of moralistic ancient history or mythology in complicated compositions with multiple figures, and painted paintings for altars and portraits, in which he not only portrayed the noblemen of high origin, but also scholars and even artists. The ideas of the protection of civil rights, duty to country and dedication to the good society presented in his works were supposed to foster a new generation of willful defenders of the Republic. Thus, it does not come as a surprise that his source of themes was primarily the period of the Piast and the Jagiellonian dynasties and the important events of that time, for example the 1794 uprising of Tadas Kosciuszka. The king's example also encouraged other noblemen to collect works of art and to be patrons of artists. Ignatas Masalskis and members of the Tizenhause, Czartoryskie and Radvilos families became known as the most prominent lovers of art. On their initiative, Martinas Knafkus, Carlos Pampani, Giuseppe Sacco and Jan Matiker came to Lithuania from Italy, the Czech lands and Poland. They provided the foundation for a new style in Lithuanian architecture. Kazimieras Kamienskis and Augustinas Kosakauskas were among local artists who first got interested in the new aesthetic ideals. Laurinas Gutsiavich is the most famous architect of that time, funded by Ignotas Masalskis, studied at centers of classicism in Italy and France. He rebuilt Vilnius Cathedral and the City Hall, the capital's most important buildings, following the examples of ancient temples, which at that time were associated with the democratic ideals of the Enlightenment and symbolized freedom for the class of urban dwellers. 
harmony, symmetry and rhythm dominate in the architecture of classicism. At first, only classical details and ornamentation, such as little triangular pendiments above windows and doors and wall pilasters, were applied to architecture. However, soon after, architects included column porticos and domes into the repertoire of ancient forms. Noblemen and barons began reconstructing old palaces and cities and building new suburban residences, surrounded by parks distinguished by their scenery. Construction of churches was also greatly supported. New types of buildings, such as schools, courts and the state institutions, appeared. There were not many sculptures of purely classical style in Lithuania. Stucco mouldings for architectural embellishment, altars, headstones, portraits and sculptures surrounding estates were most often created. Busts dominated the works of André Le Breno, the sculptor of French origin, who managed the sculpture department in Vilnius. He combined Roman portrait realism with the gracefulness of the Rococo style. As printing became popular in Lithuania in the middle of the 18th century, the demand for graphic arts increased. Graphic artists illustrated publications with carvings and made copies of famous paintings and drawings and printed them. Not only rich noblemen, but also less wealthy barons and city dwellers could decorate the walls of their houses with reproductions of graphic artists, which were much cheaper than paintings. At the beginning of classicism in Lithuania and first of all in Vilnius, the copper carving technique was the most popular. Ignotas Karenga, Joza Pasperlis, Mauritius Ptitskis Karmelitas and Jan Ligber created graphic inserts. They might not have been geniuses and they might not have had good professional training, but it was because of these artists that pieces of art became popular among the general public. In Lithuania, fine crafts, textiles, dishes, furniture and jewellery with elements of classicism can be found starting with the last quarter of the 18th century. These crafts developed not only in city guilds, but also in workshops and estate shops, of which Lithuania had more than other regions of the Republic of the Two Nations of that period. Workshops and estate shops were a new phenomenon of the Enlightenment period, which unfortunately quickly disappeared after the Republic's collapse. Glassworks, such as everyday dishes and medical containers, were created in the Ureche and Neliboko glass-producing workshops, belonging to the Radvila family. And artistic faience dishes and sculptures were made in the workshops of Bela, Svezhne, Telehan, Kozets and Neborov that belonged to the Radvila, Oginskis and Chartoriski families. Classicism and works of fine arts unfolded through constructive, clear forms and a tendency towards symmetry. During early classicism, ancient ornamental motifs of acanthus leaves and bay tree leaves, palm branches and bunches of grapes and rosebuds in the form of wreaths, as well as garlands, decorations and medallions were quite popular. All these works formed and decorated the everyday and festive surroundings of residents. <laughs>